Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of One Pod Life. Now this week, I'm speaking to the two-time Rose Lady Series winner and the first woman to actually win a tournament at Royal St. George's, Gemma Dryberg. We talk about her time at university over in the States and how she attended the IMG Academy, how she then qualified for both the LET and PGA Tours, and then what what her experiences were like when she first played in a major in the 2019 Women's PGA Championship. So without further ado, please welcome Gemma Dryberg. So is your trip to um, Dubai still on? Yes, yeah, yeah, so far so good. Um, yep. Yeah, I leave tomorrow night, so looking okay, forward well, to some sun. What are you going out there for? Uh, just training. I'm practicing with some friends out there, so okay. it seems to be a lot of golfers out there at the moment. It seems. Yeah, no, I saw that. So, uh, what's it, Charlie? Following Hubs the trend. And, yeah, why not? Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. Stuff. Okay, well, what I want to do is just talk about. Um, obviously your journey from when you started until until today really so um yep. i did a bit of research i've got quite a few bits written down here i think you've had uh, a pretty good career so far to date from what i've seen um yeah it's and, been pretty good <laughs> yeah and it all started for you when you were four years old so if you could just talk me through how it started who got you into it and sort of those sort of early years until you're about age 15 really yeah, so, yeah, like you said, I started when I was really young, about four years old, just swinging kind of little, little plastic clubs and um, just going to the range and stuff with my dad. He kind of got me into it and just grew up. I played a lot of sports growing up. I played football um, mainly and, and um, golf and played a bit of basketball and um, tennis and all sorts, but golf was always kind of there and I really always really enjoyed it. And um, so kind of grew up playing kind of little short course in near just outside Aberdeen in West Hill Um, kind of did that with dad and then we moved down to that that was in Scotland at the time and then moved down to England when I was 10 okay Um, and then yeah so that's down here now and um, that was from a dad's job so he worked in London so moved down here and then kind of got handicapped when I was 12 and that's when I kind of first started playing competitions at the local club and junior competitions and all that. So I started loving competing and um, we had a really good junior section at the club I was a member at, lots of girls and stuff. So that really helped. And stuff. yeah, and then, yeah, so then, mm. uh, should, I, should I continue? Yeah, keep, keep going, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then when I was 15, um, I decided to kind of concentrate on golf um, and I moved over to Florida and went to an uh, IMG Academy. It was a Dave Ledbetter Academy at the time. Okay. And it's like a sports academy, so they have all sorts of sports. Um, but I obviously did golf and you kind of do half the day school and half the day your sport. So um, that was a great opportunity to kind of focus on golf. And um, yeah, I got great coaching and played lots of tournaments over there as well. So yep. it was just a great experience. No, definitely. So what what was the reasoning to go out to Florida and not stay in the UK and, and sort of progress with your golf? Well, the main thing was for me, I wanted to go out to America to play um, college golf. So okay. I was hoping to get a scholarship over there. And um, I kind of felt that it was would be a best opportunity for the coaches over there to see me and for me to see the schools as well but if I was over there. Yep. Um, which uh, proved, I mean, I, I think right now, I think it's becoming more of a thing where you can stay here and um, the coaches will come over and see see you play. But kind of back then, a lot of the coaches didn't come over and okay. kind of didn't get as much exposure. So decided to go over there and kind of really be able to focus on golf. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, being able to play every day in the sun as well was great. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Not a bad place to go, Florida, is it? No, it's great. Yeah, I love it over there. <laughs> and um, you actually managed to then get a scholarship, four-year scholarship at the Zit Tulane University in New York. Yeah, Tulane. Yeah. Tulane. Um, um, the question I've got, really, based on doing that, is um, obviously you had a bit of time in the UK playing golf, but then what, what did you find was the big difference between the golf setup in the US compared to back in the UK? Well, the setup over there is great, especially the college golf system. Um, it's just there's so much competition as well. Everyone's kind of coming from all over the world to play play there. And it's kind of a really good transition from uh, kind of going from junior to pro. It's kind of that in-between period. Yep. Um, so it's a great way to kind of get into competition and, um, you know, you're playing every day as well. 
and you've got teammates as well, which is a nice dynamic because you don't really get that usually in golf. You're always no, playing you yourself. So it's nice to have a team atmosphere as well. Um, and yeah, I just think the setup's great. Like you've got tournaments kind of every two weeks, especially in the spring season. Okay. Um, and you kind of have the national championships, the conference championships are just great big tournaments to play. And um, then you have the summer when you can come home and play the tournaments at home. So it's just kind of a good setup, I think. Oh, great stuff. How did your parents feel about you going off at 15 to go, go to America? Well, I was actually quite lucky. My mum came over with me full time, but I'm not a okay. child. So she um, she came over and dad came over as much as he could. So um, okay. I was quite lucky in that in that aspect. I had them until I was uh, finished finished high school. So All a right. lot of the kids over there do, do board. So I was quite lucky to have them with me. Oh, fantastic. So you, you had that sort of family dynamic and sort of formality, formal, I can't even say the word. Formal, I, can't, mm. I, can't, I can't say it. Um, <laughs> you, you said that bit of security that you you had someone there that you could sort of lean back on and, and trust, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, especially like moving over to America it was, would have been quite tough, I think, if um, I'd done it by myself. So it was nice to have them there and have that support there, like you said. No, good stuff. Okay. Do you still hold the, the lowest 54 hole record at the school or has that been gone now? I think someone <laughs> tied with me, my oh, okay. good friend, Emily. I think she tied with me, but I still, uh, our two names are up there, I believe. Great stuff. That was minus eight over yeah. 54 holes. What, what tournament was that in? Or was that just a, a, a local sort of game that you played at the school? It was in a tournament. Yeah, it was. Okay. I think it was the UCF event in Florida, Orlando. Um yeah, we just kind of lit it up that week, the whole team. Okay. Um, we ended up, unfortunately, we came second in the end, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a very low scoring week. But well, I think right. one day, I think we shot as a team, it was something crazy. It was like 17 under as a team. Wow. Um, I think I shot, um, what did I, shoot? I think I must have shot five under or something. And then yep. there was another four under and yeah, all sorts happened that day. So it was, it was a good memories. And obviously, that the lowest hole, the lowest fifty-four hole round was minus eight, which you, which is fantastic. I mean, yeah, the fact that you're still, what sort of six, seven years later, it is your name's still at the top. Obviously, now that someone's joined you, but at least you know who he yeah. is. Yes, and it's a good friend as well, so I'm okay with it. I'm happy she didn't beat me though. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah, that, that would have been bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I also have read, words with them. exactly. I also read that you um, you had two career individual titles when you was at school. Um, is that correct? And, and what were they? Yeah, so I won um, the Old Waverly Tournament, um, Invitational Tournament in Mississippi. Um, okay. So that was in my second year. And yeah, I um, can't remember how much I won, but it must have only been one or two shots, I think. Um, right. But yeah, it was a great, it was my first kind of big win, um, you know, a post-junior career. And um, yeah, it was great. Um, and our, I think our team came second as well. So it was a good week. Oh, perfect. Um, it's pretty cool. I'm not sure if you've seen the trophy, but <laughs> they're, no, they're the school, Mississippi State, their mascot's a bulldog. Right. So it's literally a bulldog <laughs> on top of a, a plaque. Right. Okay. So it's quite, quite funny when I was giving it a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> no, have you still got the trophy? I do. It's in my room. Yeah, oh, okay. I won't be put, yeah, I'll always have that up somewhere. Um, and then the other one um, was uh, I actually came tied first at the our conference championship. I think it was the same seat, same season. Right. Um, and our our whole team won that event as well. So oh, yeah. Right. So yeah, goes oh, fantastic. Good memories. So you had, you had a pretty good four years and just spending time there, learning you learning your craft and and yeah, getting some titles under your belt, which is quite good to learn for the future, really. Yeah, it was all just a great experience. We played all over the, the US as well. So kind of got to see different kinds of courses and um, playing in a, in a team as well, just kind of that different kind of mindset. And uh, then playing in the national championships three out of the four years was mm -hmm. was great. And uh, yeah, just an amazing experience. And really, I think it really improved my game. No, good stuff. Before you turned pro, um, you managed to play in the uh, the, the Curtis Cup, the, Espirito, the Espirito Santo Trophy and a few other events. Yep. Um, how did you feel about playing those and what sort of experience did you have? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, the Espirito Santo, which is the, the World Dam, we played in Japan. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I'd never been to Asia before. Um, so that was an amazing experience and what a cool country. Yeah. Um, people were so nice there, welcomed us. And um, it was yeah, over two courses and 
just all the best kind of amateurs from all over the world. So, um, and there was three, three from each team. Um, and yeah, it was just great experience to go over there, uh, re- represent Scotland and yep. um, yeah, it was amazing. And then the Curtis Cup, um, it's probably the highlight of my amateur career. Um, was in yeah 2014 and uh, played that in St Louis and the States and yeah it was very nerve wracking I must admit yep. being on the first tee okay. <laughs> um, but yeah great experience I had the kind of first time we'd kind of played in front of any cameras and kind of a big crowd and stuff so great experience kind of before turning pro uh, nice kind stuff. of a couple of years after so yeah, um, yeah amazing memories. Oh, well done. So you you could basically the, the the time you spent in America was was definitely worthwhile, and it it said put you in the right place to then turn pro in two thousand and fifteen. Um, yeah, I think it really helped as well because I play a lot in the states now. So just kind of yep. knowing, not even knowing people over there and having friends over there is helpful because I don't have a place over there. So sometimes I stay with friends from university and okay, or high, high school so it, that helps as well and just kind of knowing the kind of courses and stuff and playing on grainy greens <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay well look obviously up 2015 you turned pro uh, you was back in the UK by the looks of it um, yeah and you, man- you you started playing on the LET access series um, where you made um, what was it you, you made three cuts in four events, um, but then that led to you getting your LET full your LET full card in 2016. So, what was that first sort of two years like being back in the UK playing on the Access Series? Yeah, it was good. It was a great experience um, as well because um, I hadn't I hadn't done a Q I did Q school that end of that year and mm-hmm. just playing it was kind of the first pro events I'd ever played. So um, it was just amazing to to play in a pro event first of all, and then kind of travel as well by myself, um, meeting some of the girls out there and some of those same girls that are out there who I'm still friends with now. So, yep. um, yeah, there were really cool tournaments. I have fond memories of going because some of the access events are kind of in, you know, places you'd never, ever go. Um, <laughs> and they're quite hard to get to sometimes. I remember taking trains and buses, all sorts of things to get to certain places. But, so, so where was um, the most obscure place you had to get you had to go to? I think it was called Solvesborg. I'm probably not saying that right. It's in Sweden. Right. Okay. Um, and I remember I didn't really know anyone at the time, and I just stayed in the, booked this little hotel in this in the in the town, and I didn't have a car or anything, and I ended up uh, well getting there first of all to fly into Copenhagen, I believe, and then took the train to Solvesborg, and I kind of get off and. Um, it's like kind of this everything's dead there's no one there and it's like oh gosh what have I done (laughs) Um, so I kind of drag my golf club suitcase up the hill to this hotel find it and then um, I think I get. I think the first day I got a taxi to the to the the golf course, and that was okay. But I was like, oh, I don't I don't want to pay for a taxi every day. So I yep. kind of asked the golf club how to get back to town, and they said, oh, it's a really nice walk. You can go this way, this way. And so I did it, and it was a really <laughs> nice walk. So I was able to have my golf clubs and leave them at the in storage at the golf club, and I I literally walked back and forth each day. Well, I was, I was literally that's going to be my next question was what you walked back and forth with your golf bag every day but obviously yeah, thankfully, <laughs> it was just me um, okay. I left my golf clubs there thankfully yeah. but it was a really nice walk over this bridge and over the water and um, yeah looking back on it now it's just crazy to think that's yeah. how because I would never do that now I'd always kind of rent a car <laughs> and you know but yeah, yeah. just back then I didn't know anyone and didn't know what to do and but it was cool it was a good experience yeah. good stuff <laughs> So how did you actually um, manage to get your full um, card for the for the full tour? Did you actually, was that through Q School or did you just get through that with sort of order of merit? Yeah, so that was through Q School. Right. Um, I did did the pre-qualifying in um, Casablanca in Morocco. Right, okay. And then, then the final was in Marrakesh nice. um, that, that same year. Great stuff. And also that year... Uh, I got again. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I got it written down here that you actually also then started playing on the the Sumatra tour over in America as well, which is the obviously the the LET access of the LPGA. Um, yeah. How, how did you sort of juggle both of those sort of traveling back and forth all the time? Yeah. So I think I played. I think I played like five event five events on the Sumatra tour that 2016 season. Yes. Yeah, 
I so there was quite a good there was a gap in LAT schedule where I think there was three events in Florida um, and played all of them and then another gap in LAT schedule there was I think two in Michigan I believe and um, so I was able to kind of pick kind of little gaps in, in the in the schedule during the year and kind of yeah. went went over to play semester so it kind of had a really full season um which was great um but yeah i kind of focused on let mostly um but it was nice to go over there and kind of experience the metro as well no, good and again you, you i'm guessing you did that because of obviously the connection that you had with america before by going to obviously to school there you felt that that's the place you you, you feel more comfortable with so you go back over there whereas a lot of people guys over here might go off and do something different like maybe go play in Dubai like some of the guys are yeah. doing now or, or whatever so th- was that just an easy transition for you go yep I'll go play in America then yeah it was um I always kind of wanted to get over there at some point so I felt since I have had some status um I might as well try it and see what it was like so yep. um which I'm glad I did um and yeah, those are those are also places on Symmetra that you <laughs> you would never go. No. Um, but yeah, great experiences traveling all around America and seeing different places. So um, yeah, it's good. Oh, good. Well, obviously it helped because you then qualified, um, tied thirteenth for Q School for the LPGA, and got got on that way. Um, and you've been on there ever since. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. So again, flipping between the two because you, you're also on the LET as well. So you've got a pretty jam packed schedule when we uh, get back into playing golf. Yes, um, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, ag- ag- again, great achievement there. Um, yeah. And then I also saw uh, 2016 17 season, you, you um, actually managed to get your first professional victory at the Oatlands mm. Ladies Pro-Am, which was down in um, Australia. Yeah, so that's what, right, yeah. yeah, so um, first question is, yeah, what led you to go down there and play in the Pro-Am? Um, and then what was yeah. it like to actually get your first professional win? Yeah, so the AOPG um, is the Australian Ladies Tour, um, which are, I think they've just changed their name to the WPGA. Yeah, they have, yeah. Um, so they do, well, usually this time of year we'd be over there, but... And um, that's all cancelled this year, unfortunately. But mm. usually they have kind of a pro am um, kind of season just before the big events start, like the Vic Open and the Aussie Open. So it kind of encourages girls to go down there early and um, get some playing time in when it's cold here and kind of get in some, you know, tournament um, experience in before the season starts. So that's kind of what I wanted to do and went down there. That was the first time I'd ever done, done it. Um, cause the previous year I think I went and just did, played the events and then left but this this time I kind of went for the whole um, the programs and the, the other events so yeah so I played um, at the Oatlands tournament and yeah it was a two day event and ended up winning so it was yeah, amazing it was great to get my first win and, and um, it was actually it was on my dad's birthday so that was it even better were, yeah. you, were, were your parents there at all or were they still back in no the... unfortunately they were back in the uk but i think they had a, a champagne breakfast that morning oh nice fantastic <laughs> yeah when they heard the news yeah what was your final score that day do you remember yeah if i'm honest i can't remember I, that's bad <laughs> i should probably know <laughs> your first ever victory you should know exactly what the scores were i know all i care <laughs> is that i won <laughs> no that's, okay I'll let, I'll let you off then that's all that's all that matters <laughs> exactly no good stuff well um yeah, great. Another great achievement by you there. And then obviously then you went um, also in 2016, you managed to finish tied sixth at the, well, sorry, 2017, it says here, for the, mm-hmm. uh, the Fatima Bint Mubarak Ladies Open, um, which mm-hmm. is your, I think is your best finish on the European Tour? Um, I think I bettered it this year at uh, in Australia again. I think right, I came okay. fifth, fifth or fourth, fifth. Mm, I should know. I think I came fifth. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't see that on the on when I was doing my That's, research. So no, well done. Yeah, thank you. It's all right. Um, there's more. There's still more to talk about before we even get to this year. Um, <laughs> you on, in 2018, you played in the LPGA again, um, where you managed to get a tied 21st at the 2018 Canberra uh, Portland Classic and the Pure Silk mm-hmm. Championship, um, and then which I think is a great achievement, you managed to make your major championship debut at the Women's yes. PGA. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that one. What was that experience like, actually getting on a major tournament? Yeah, amazing. Yeah, like I said, it was my first major and kind of always one of my goals was to play a major championship and uh, what a great one to do it at. It was at yeah, Hazeltine 
um, where I think that famous was it um, Tiger Woods and uh, what's, what was the guy's name? Oh, I've lost his name, but it was a, an amazing finish um, and one of the majors there for the men. And um, it's really cool to see the course and play such a big championship on it and yeah. all the big stands and uh, just had a really major feel about it and ended up playing playing pretty well. Unfortunately, I got food poisoning over the weekend. Oh, so did you? Um, I was still shame. able to, yeah, it was a real shame. I was able to still play quite well, but I, mm-hmm. I think I could have maybe done slightly better if I hadn't had been feeling better, but it, was, it still didn't dampen the experience and no, um, amazing to look back on it now and um, hopefully I can play more more majors in the future. Impressive. Was you paired with any, um, any, any sort of superstars that you can remember? Um, I played with, um, was it Suo? Was it no? It was Minji Lee in the okay. over the weekend. Um, yeah, Minji, she was great. Um, and who did I play the last day with? Oh, I think it was. I think it was a couple of rookies actually. Oh, okay. So yeah, Minji Lee was probably the biggest one. Yeah, yeah, no, she's pretty good. So yeah, very good. <laughs> not, not a bad person to to walk around with and watch. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> no, great stuff. Well, well done. And then all that led to. The, obviously last year um, Mr Justin Rose put on the ladies series and up comes Gemma wins two in a row you won the, yeah. the Buckinghamshire Golf Club you won that one and literally the next tournament um, at Royal St George's Golf Club and you became the first woman, woman to ever win at Royal St George's as well which is fantastic so again what was the whole experience like and, and obviously going into that did you did you have any um, sort of um, optimism that you could actually win a tournament or maybe even two yeah I mean kind of when I came into the Rose series it was um, didn't really know how the game was going to be because it was kind of straight after lockdown yep. but um, it was great to kind of get those those events in and see how the game was and I one of my goals was to win one but winning two was was even better yep. um, but yeah a great experience and um, some they had some really good fields as well all the girls turned up and um, it was amazing to be able to play a tournament golf again, and um, especially at Royal St George's, that was an honour to win there. Yeah, but it was. Um, very special, yeah. Well, your name will be down in history for forever. So, I mean, what a, yeah. great, what a great feeling that must be. Yeah, it's very cool. My coach actually just got me a gift. There's a cool photo of me playing on my so on the 17th hole. Um, I had to hit it's a par four, but I had to hit driver three wood because it was so windy. Yep. Um, and it was probably one of the best shots I've probably ever hit. And um, there's, a, there's a photo of it, and he's he's got it printed onto like a canvas, um, big kind of enlarged photo. So it's cool to have that. He was very very nice of him to do that. No, fantastic! What a great great memory to have. Yeah, definitely. Did you play in all the road series uh, tournaments, or did you handpick the ones that you wanted to play? Uh, unfortunately, I only was able to play the first four, and then I had okay. to go over to because I wanted to start the LPGA season, um, right, okay. and I had to do a two week quarantine, which was a bit frustrating. But yep. um, so then I had to miss two more events than than I needed to, um, and then yeah, unfortunately, I missed kind of the last at the end of the the series. That's a shame. You could have had a chance of winning yeah. the um, Order of Merit and taking that money off Charlie, couldn't you? Yes, yeah. I was very, I was tempted to stay and um, yep. it was a big decision, but I'm glad I did it in the end because, no, um, yeah, that tournament I got back to in America played quite well, so no, well it was worth it in the end. Well, congratulations on being the first woman to ever win at Royal St George's. Um, not Thank many, you. Not many people can say that, so well, only one person can say that and you can say it. So well <laughs> yeah, it's an honour, definitely. <laughs> no, good stuff. Pod Life is brought to you in partnership with Energy Golf, the leading golf development platform. They are committed to providing a service that allows you to reach your maximum potential by improving your mindset, creating physical longevity and funding your golf career. What they've done is take professional tour team experience and brought it to you through their platform so you can have your very own tour team in your pocket. Energy Golf offers the ability to learn from leading professionals in the fields of fitness, nutrition, breathing, caddying, psychology, business as well as proven tour winners and many more. There are also courses based around the mental aspects of golf such as mental toughness, emotional control and self-esteem. Visit energy.com to learn more and to claim your exclusive one month free trial, simply send an email with the subject one pod life to info at energy.com and enjoy. Now let's get back to the podcast. Well, Jim, I think you've had a, a very 
stellar career so far to date and obviously I'm, I'm, there's definitely more to come obviously over here in the European tour and obviously over in America as well I'm pretty sure you're going to hopefully smash both of them at some point and um, yeah we'll be seeing yeah, a lot more of, of, of Gemma but what yeah, we'll do is you. Move, you're welcome what we'll do is move into a, a section um, where the reason I started doing the podcast as many people know who listen to this is to get um, tips from pros like yourself who have gone through the ranks have made their way to the top of the top of their game as they are right now and obviously moving forward but then also to find out if they could pick out three things throughout their career that they would then tell aspiring golfers to do what would those three things be it's hmm, a good question i think the first one would be kind of play anywhere you can get as much experience as you can playing playing everywhere like I played down in Australia I kind of went over to play the programs down there and um, I'm going to I was going to go over over to play Symmetra and kind of get the experience over there played some um, mini tours in Florida before and kind of just just kind of getting as much experience as you can um, all over the world if you get the opportunity to um, don't say no to anything I'd say Great stuff. Um, and then next one let's see I'd probably say um just kind of when you're when you're traveling <clears throat> i'd say when you can share with people definitely take take people up and especially when you start going out on tour i think yeah. it can be quite intimidating when you don't know people um and just go out there and ask people oh can do do you mind if i share with you or uh, share a place with you and kind of get to know people as much as you can um I, I found that really worth it even though it's kind of daunting at the time yep. not knowing anyone when you first get out on tour but I think just getting to know people I think because the friends you make on tour really make tour um you know fun and uh, it's part of it why I love doing it is not just the golf but actually the people that are on it and the people you get to meet so no, I'd say no. that's a big one okay and then the third one third one um I'd say, do I have a bit of time to think? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can cut this up, it's okay. Yeah, sounds good. Mm. Yeah, maybe something to do with training or something, I don't know. Or, training, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably say the team around you is really important. Um, getting a solid team around you and a good coach and um, even, you know, someone uh, – to help you with the mental aspect of it, putting, whatever. Just really work on getting people that support you and that you can trust around you. It's maybe not the easiest thing to do at the start because you kind of go through a few coaches or whatever, but it's worth it once you get to that, to the, the get the right people in your team that you trust um, and you can really share anything to. Um, that's really key, I think. No, great stuff. Well, that actually leads me into one of my final questions that I had to speak to you about mm -hmm. was that you've actually got, you're quite unique because you've actually got two different swing coaches, obviously yes. one based in the UK and one based in the US. Now the question yeah. I was going to ask you is how do you manage to get synergy between the two? Yeah. So to be honest, when I don't work with them at the, at, like at the same time, okay. um, if, so when I'm in the States, um, I'll go, I'll go see the, the guy in the uh, my Kevin Collins, yep. he's he, he was the coach I had at IMG. Okay. So um, I've kind of always kept in touch with him. Um, and Lawrence here, Lawrence Farmer, he's my main coach, I'd say. Okay. Um, so I see him more often, obviously, because I'm in the UK mm -hmm. um, quite a bit now. And um, but yeah, I mean, the good thing is about the two of them is that they are very similar in the way they coach. So pretty much whenever I see either of them. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing, uh, but I make sure that I communicate with them both at the same time and tell them what's going on and what each of them are saying. Yeah, um, I was going to say, it's going to be quite hard if one person tells you some, some, one thing yeah, and the other guy goes, be... well, no, I wouldn't do that. I'd do it this way. You're like, well, <laughs> who do you listen to? Yeah. But I'm guessing, like you said, you keep them in check, which is good. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. You need to because you your head would be spinning otherwise. <laughs> um, so I try to keep it like very simple in terms of, you know, if I'm in the US for an extended period of time, then I'll go see Kevin and kind of get his thoughts. But um, Lawrence is still my main coach um, over here. No, great stuff. Um, two more questions and I'll let you go. 
Um, first one mm-hmm. is you've just signed with OCM Sports Management. Um, yeah. And I was just wondering, is that the first time you've ever joined up with a sort of management company? And then I know it's obviously still quite new, but what are you, what are you looking forward to and what, what are you expecting to get from it? Yeah, that is the first time I've been with a management company. I was kind of, I kind of got to the point now that I, th- I feel like it's the right step for me to go that way. Okay. Um, in the past, I've kind of just had um, help from the golf club and um, members of the golf club kind of supported me. But I think I need to move to a more commercial side and get that support, hopefully, from them. And I'm sure it will go well. And um, hopefully, I'll kind of get some more uh, work with some other brands and um, hopefully, they can get me some sponsorship. Um, mm-hmm. So, fingers crossed. No, definitely. Okay. Thank you, Gemma. And I've got one last question, which I'm hoping you can finish with. I did read that you play the guitar. So, question <laughs> yes. is, what's your favourite song to play on the guitar? Uh, Blackbird by Paul McCartney. All right. Okay, great. How often um, do, you get, do you get much chance to actually play the guitar on tour or do you take it with you? No, I don't. Um, <laughs> I... I uh, that would be quite difficult. You at least get yourself <laughs> but, a little uh, ukulele. Really. <laughs> yeah, I do. I need to learn the ukulele instead. <laughs> um, could probably fit that in a suitcase. Yeah, but definitely. yeah, the, uh, the lockdowns recently, I've been able to practice a bit. So that's been quite nice. But yeah, I used to play in high school. Um, used to have lessons every week. So um, um, it's nice to go back to it. And it's kind of therapeutic. Yeah, as I was going to say, it also takes your, your mind off golf, I guess, as well, because it's the same else to yeah. focus on. Yeah, definitely. You kind of get kind of there just you know trying to learn the song again um and kind of practicing it practicing it and it's kind of just gets your mind off everything yeah no, great stuff i'm not i'm no ed sheeran but it's, uh, <laughs> it's nice well if, if, the, if, the, if the golf career doesn't kick off which I'm, I'm sure it will if it doesn't you can always fall back and play the guitar there we go <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. i'll have that to fall back on exactly well Gemma, thank you for coming on the podcast to give us an insight into yourself and what life has been like since the age of four um and yeah, obviously, we, only good things that come your way going forward. So good luck. Yeah, thanks, Lloyd. Nice to speak to you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. So a big thank you there to Gemma for coming on and giving us uh, an oversight into her career so far and how she's going to try and play on both the uh, LET and the LPGA this year. Now, thank you guys for listening to another episode of One Pod Life. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, don't forget to share it on Instagram, maybe the story, tag some people in, tell them all about it. Don't forget you can follow me on Instagram at One Pod Life. And um, yeah, let me know how you think about the uh, podcast so far and who else you want to hear from. I've got quite a lot of people lined up, but I want to give you guys the access to who you want. So thanks again, guys, and speak to you again soon.